Good morning, traders, and welcome to the Bookmap Pro Trader webinar series. Today's the last day, uh, Friday, 10 a.m. Uh, we have Doug Pless. Uh, you guys may have heard of him. Uh, he's been doing some excellent work uh, in Twitter uh, and in our Discord chat room. Uh, so uh, uh, you'll probably see that, uh, yeah, he's trading futures, but also stocks uh, and uh, the two together. Uh, as well, looking at, for example, uh, the NASDAQ E-mini as well as the Qs uh, and, uh, you know, gleaning some uh, uh, insights from those. Uh, and then also he's been uh, very engaged in the spot gamma uh, options levels within uh, within Bookmap here. So I'm looking very forward to the, uh, the presentation here. Um, uh, trader bio here. Uh, let's just read through it. Uh, Doug began trading options in 2008, focusing on selling premium strategies. He learned to trade options from a variety of traders and mentors, including Don Kaufman, Scott Kramer, uh, Dan Sheridan, and Tom Sosnoff. Uh, so from the Think or Swim guys. Um, in 2017, he left a career uh, in engineering and information technology, began trading full time. After being introduced to futures uh, trading in 2019, he began to seek a deeper understanding of futures markets order flow and why price reacts at certain levels. He discovered Bookmap in early 2020 and Spot Gamma a year later. He currently trades futures and stocks full time, actively participates in the Bookmap Discord chat room and posts content daily in the chat room and on Twitter and writes articles for Spot Gamma. So uh, here are some links uh, to uh, those resources here. I'm putting them into the chat for you guys so you can click directly on them and go check them out. So you don't need to copy them down. Uh, I need to go through the disclosures here and then we're gonna turn it right over to Doug. Uh, everyone can hear me, right? Uh, audio and video, if you can, just uh, say yes in the questions. Okay, okay, great. Um, all right, general disclosure, all bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Live trading is in simulation demo paper trading mode and strictly for educational purposes. Live trading executed in simulation cannot accurately represent realistic trading performance. Uh, I don't think Doug is trading live, but uh, I'm just going through it anyway. Risk disclosures, uh, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security nor lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, so let's get started here and let me turn it right over to Doug. Welcome, Doug. Hey, Bruce, can you hear me and see my screen? Yep, looks good. Okay, all right, I'm gonna go, go in slideshow mode here. All right, so uh, everything looks good? Yeah, you're all set to go. Okay, great, all right, so good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about my trading approach from planning, preparation, uh, all the way through to execution. And first, I'm going to talk about the approach itself, and then I'll go through several examples. And then finally, I'll talk about the tools that I use and uh, then present some takeaways. And uh, you know, feel free to ask questions at any time, and Bruce will be reading those. Uh, first, I want to start with uh, an interesting quote from Jim Dalton uh, that I found in his book, In Mind Over Markets. And I'll let you read the, the full quote if you want. The, <clears throat> the, the meat of it is that most market participants, in fact, most people in general, would rather be given a set of rules to blindly follow than have to use personal insight and innovative thought. Well, I guess I'm in the minority. I've always wanted to know why. Um, I've taken the approach of trying to understand the market first before trading. Um, and as Bruce mentioned uh, in the introduction, I was introduced to futures trading in late 2019 by an, by an organization that teaches all aspects of trading, futures, stocks, and options, uh, long-term, short-term, 
uh, with a number of instructors there. And the uh, futures instructor teaches uh, NQ. He trades NQ and teaches a system uh, for NQ uh, based on levels that repeat every 100 points in NQ. Um, and this made no sense to me. Uh, I wanted to know why price would react at certain levels. So I started doing research and trying to find answers. And I found Bookmap uh, on YouTube in uh, January 2020. After watching several of the uh, YouTube videos, uh, price action and why it would react at certain levels started to make sense. And Bookmap just made a lot of sense to me. Um, and Bruce did a, does a great job with the YouTube videos and, um, uh, you know, again, presents book map very clearly and concisely, and it made a lot of sense to me. So uh, as it turns out, have I found, as I found out later, uh, NQ does react at certain levels, but those are based on uh, liquidity, round numbers and key gamma levels in both NQ itself as well as the Qs, the QQQ. And uh, I'll talk more about that later. So as I mentioned, um, I was an options trader before learning to trade futures. And I found <coughs> Bookmap soon after uh, being introduced, introduced to futures trading. So I um, I was actually learning book map at the same time that I was learning to day trade uh, both futures and stocks. Um, so I, what I want to do now is point out some of the uh, education sources that have really helped me along the way. Um, first, book map uh, offers incredible uh, education. Uh, starting with the uh, educational vid videos that come with your subscription, the daily webinars, both with uh, Bruce uh, covering order flow and uh, Scott Pulsini and uh, J Trader uh, showing how they trade futures and stocks. And then all the videos on the uh, YouTube channel that like the features and components playlist and uh, uh, the pro trader webinar series. Um, and Bruce is the master of order flow. I um, highly recommend watching his daily webinars. Um, so the second source is Spot Gamma. Brent Kachuba uh, has in introduced to me uh, and probably most retail traders a new way of looking at the market and price behavior based on market maker hedging flow. Um, and this has really kind of formed the basis of my uh, my approach uh, to trading. Um, uh, Spot Gamma off, also offers great education. Uh, Brent has done a number of the uh, Pro Trader webinar, uh, Pro Trader webinars, as well as uh, uh, has a YouTube channel. And then J Trader and Scott Pulsini, uh, both professional traders that uh, present weekly in the uh, uh, daily webinars. And from them, I've learned planning, discipline, preparation, and also their setups. Uh, with J Trader, his J lines, um, and then Scott Pulsini with uh, stops and icebergs. And uh, finally, uh, last but not least, the uh, Bookmap Discord chat room uh, has really been a great help to me and a breakthrough. Um, it's been great being able to participate in. Uh, intelligent discussions about book map, order flow, and trading every day and to present my thoughts and to uh, to help others. And uh, there's some great traders in there uh, ready and willing to uh, help anyone uh, who's interested in learning. Uh, Tom, David, Trader HE, Moby, Yuri, and others. Uh, you know, again, it's been great being able to participate there. So I took ideas from all of these sources and developed my own approach that makes sense to me. And um, so now I'm going to uh, talk talk about that approach. Uh, and 
so based on what I've learned from these sources and my own observations, uh, I've come up with a couple of key tenets uh, for trading. And the first is options trading and the resulting market maker hedging activity is a key driver of order flow and equity index futures such as ES and NQ. Uh, and this is this is what I've learned from Spot Gamma. Uh, and Brent at Spot Gamma has talked about this uh, extensively. So uh, as a, a brief example, let's say, uh, at, well, at first, in a sense, really, then uh, we're saying that I'm saying that options trading is, is driving the futures market. And uh, as an example, uh, let's say traders buy, buy calls or sell puts uh, in the SPX index, then the market makers take the opposite side of that trade and they have to buy huge, uh, futures to hedge their delta exposure. So keep in mind that market makers want to remain uh, delta neutral. Uh, they're just there to facilitate order flow. Um, so, you know, uh, again, if the the options flow is bullish, then then generally market makers are going to be uh, buying futures since they're taking the uh, the opposite side of those trades uh, to hedge their delta exposure. And uh, a couple of points here: one, the only way to hedge trades in SPX is uh, through ES futures. And um, so SPX and SPY options trading is driving uh, hedging in ES futures, and that in turn is driving ES order flow. And again, Brent has talked about this, that uh, market makers are in the market all day long, uh, making markets and uh, hedging. And then for NQ, NDX and QQQ, and I would really discount NDX. It's it's uh, really not much of a factor. So really QQQ uh, option trades um, is driving NQ hedging, uh, which is driving NQ order flow. So that's the first uh, first of my key tenets. And the second is that price seeks liquidity, key gamma levels, and round numbers. And liquidity, uh, let's take, take NQ for example, would be both in uh, NQ itself as well as the Qs. And I've shown that in a number of posts and examples. And then um, the key gamma levels would for NQ would primarily be uh, what well, would be in NDX and QQQ. Um, and for, uh, for ES, it would be an SPX and SPY, and then finally round numbers. Uh, and for NQ, that would be um, NQ itself again, as well as QQQ. And I would say uh, actually the round numbers in, in the Qs are probably more important than the round numbers in NQ. So my approach, uh, there are really uh, four parts to it. Uh, first is a thesis. This is what to expect for the day. Uh, the second is the trend. Which way is the market going? Uh, the third is the target. Where is price going? I like to I like to have a target on every trade. I, I want to know uh, uh, which way uh, you know again which way price is going or you know have an idea and then a target and then finally uh, the trigger. Uh, that's when to enter the trade, and that's uh, uh, that's based on order flow. So I'll talk about these in in more detail. Um, so first is the uh, is my thesis, and for my thesis for the day, I want to uh, have an idea of the anticipated volatility, trading range, and then a directional bias. Um, so volatility and uh, anticipated volatility and trading range are generally easier to um, 
it's, it's very, it, it's easier to have an idea of these two than a directional bias. Um, so the basis for my thesis, that how I, I gather information uh, to develop my thesis uh, is based on first the spot gamma uh, morning report. So spot gamma subscribers get um, two reports daily, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. And the, the morning report includes a, a number of metrics for uh, both ES, uh, SPX, and uh, NQ, NDX, QQQ. Uh, as well as a narrative describing, uh, I guess, summarizing some of the metrics and, and what, uh, what may happen during the day. So I'm gonna go over these briefly, uh, the things that I look at, maybe give a, uh, like a one sentence description. And for anyone who's interested in learning more, uh, I guess it's really beyond the scope of, uh, of this presentation, but I, I highly recommend taking a look at uh, uh, Spot Gamma, the, the website, uh, as well as their uh, YouTube channel. So the Spot Gamma Gamma Index is a uh, proprietary measurement of total gamma. Um, again, this is something that's unique to Spot Gamma. And based on uh, historical data, uh, a positive number indicates a lower volatility day and a negative number would uh, indicate or lead uh, uh, point to a uh, higher volatility day. Um, next is the gamma notional. And this is the sum of the call gamma minus put gamma. Um, so a positive number uh, would indicate that the underlying is dominated by call gamma, and that that generally uh, points to a lower volatility. Uh, negative gamma notional indica indicates uh, put gamma or put dominance, and that would uh, generally point to a higher higher volatility. Um, and then um, a high number positive number would also indicate that market makers are going to be trading against price. So as price moves up, market makers are selling, and as price moves down, market makers are buying. So uh, more of a uh, mean reverting range range type day. Um, and then uh, negative gamma would would indicate the positive that market makers are trading with price. So as price moves up, market makers are buying, and as price moves down, market makers are selling. And this would uh, point to a higher volatility, uh, more of a trend day, market uh, market continuing uh, continuing to move in in one direction. Um, now this morning report uh, also includes key gamma levels. Um, like the put wall, call wall, volat trigger, um, uh, and the zero gamma level. And I also look at high liquidity levels. This is not in the spot gamma uh, report, but I look at the high liquidity levels before the market opens. So um, <clears throat> I. I uh, in the uh, book map chart, I will kind of compress it so I can see all the liquidity above and below price for ES and NQ, and that may be an indication of which, pray, uh, which way price is going to move. So if there's a lot of liquidity stacked up above price in, um, in ES, for example, considering that I think price seeks liquidity, that may be an indication that uh, price is gonna move up uh, toward those levels and vice versa if there's a lot of liquidity uh, pre-market stacked down below ES. Um, and then from spot gamma, I also look at the uh, SPX and QQQ uh, VANA models. 
and I'll talk more about this when we when I actually look at a Vanna model. Um, but this shows how market maker delta exposure may shift as price and IV uh, implied volatility move up and down. And then finally, I look at the spot gamma equity hub for SPY and QQQ. And um, the metrics that I look at there, um, look for there are the key gamma strike and the hedge wall. And these are strikes of, I'll talk about uh, talk about this more later, but of gamma concentration and um, uh, you know levels of of interest. So that's the uh, that's my thesis. That's how I develop my thesis for the day. And the next is the the trend. Which way is price going? And this is pretty straightforward. Uh, you know, everybody can do this. Look at uh, candlestick charts, highs and lows. Um, uh, the VWAP, a candlestick chart with moving averages. So uh, here I'm actually looking at um, a candlestick chart with uh, J lines. That's the uh, uh, I I do use use those and found uh, find those helpful. So that's the red and the green moving averages, and then the, the, the uh, nine EMA nine period uh, expen uh, exponential moving average. That's the yellow line. And then the blue dotted line is VWAP. So that's how I have my um, candlestick chart set up. And then the um, the next item is target. Where is price going? The, to me, this is very important. Um, and uh, again, the, the uh, price could be going to a liquidity level. Uh, and that applies for uh, for ES, for both ES and SPY, and for NQ, uh, both NQ itself as well as the Qs. And then key gamma levels uh, for ES, that would be an SPX or SPY. <coughs> and um, for NQ, that would primarily be uh, the Qs. And then finally, the round number levels. Um, uh, for ES, that's going to be uh, ES and SPY, and for N NQ, that's going to be NQ as well as the Qs. And um, now I really want to stress here that the these round number levels and the ETFs are very important to watch. I think it's uh, uh, you know key to watch, uh, especially for NQ. Key to watch QQQ. Um, both the liquidity and the uh, round number levels. So then, finally, uh, finally the trigger: when to uh, when to enter a trade. And uh, I kind of look at um, uh, look at price action in terms of reversals and pullbacks and trend breaks. And then to enter a trade, I'm uh, pretty much always looking for a confluence of signals. And I'll show that in uh, some of my examples. So I'm looking at uh, the book map chart. I'm looking at the volume dots, uh, stop and iceberg orders, absorption, uh, liquidity imbalances, and shifts and order flow. And that would be the uh, cumulative volume delta, uh, as well as the hedging flow. And that's the uh, uh, that's shown with the uh, hero indicator. And I'll talk more about that as well. Um, so in this little uh, little screenshot here, uh, this is actually showing a reversal with a couple of uh, entries. The the first entry would be uh, so I I showed that uh, the red line there showing the trend break. And the first entry would be kind of the first uh, shallow pullback after the after the reversal, um, seeing how the um, order flow has shifted from uh, the red dots, which are showing the uh, uh, sell market orders, uh, shifting over to uh, green uh, green dots, bullish or buy market orders, and then a couple of uh, additional entries. Uh, pullback entries uh, again showing when order flow is shifting from uh, uh, 
bullish or uh, bearish to bullish. And uh, you know, as far as reading order flow, again, I highly recommend watching uh, watching the daily webinars. Bruce uh, covers reading order flow, uh, and it's uh, you know I watch those every day, either uh, during the day or watch the recordings at night. Uh, now, one thing to note, I uh, especially for NQ, uh, I typically prefer a stop entry, uh, or I use a stop entry quite a bit. Uh, I'm not trying to buy the bottom tick or sell the top tick. I, I find that uh, stop entries are um, are really helpful. So uh, at this point, I want to concentrate on NQ and go through um, go through two days with uh, with three total examples. Uh, Bruce, are there any questions at this point? Uh, no, not yet. Uh, people or uh, uh, traders, please get your your um, uh, 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 questions in for for Doug. Uh, he's going through a lot of stuff and very specific uh, for his setups, etc. A lot of really good stuff in here. Uh, and then uh, David Blake is uh, obviously uh, uh, very supportive here for you. And uh, uh, as uh, I said, you're very very kind for mentioning uh, uh, him and uh, other traders in the Discord room. Well, they, they've been a great help to me and uh, uh, really helped make that uh, chat room a, a you know a great great place for for learning and uh, and and talking about trading. All yeah, right, so agreed. agreed. Okay. Uh, we, we do have Michael. Michael here is um, requesting maybe uh, uh, you, you can reach out to Doug uh, uh, later um, by requesting slides from you if you can get it, get the slides from you. Uh, that's up to you. Well, I uh, Bruce has the link to the article. This presentation is based on an article that I wrote for Spot Gamma. So it's the, um, uh, and I believe those are available to the public. So yeah. everything that is in this presentation or, or most of it uh, should be in that article. Yeah. And it's, so it, so it's in the uh, the Spot Gamma blog, and that link, um, it, Michael, is in the uh, chat there. So you should be able to click right on it and go right to it. Okay. So uh, for my first example, again, I'm going to focus on uh, in queue for the for these examples and the rest of the presentation, um, and. Uh, you know, as I mentioned, I uh, uh, first look at the uh, Spot Gamma AM report, and from there, uh, I get the Gamma Notional and the volati volatility trigger. And note, this is for the Qs, QQQ. So this is the the background information that I'm. Uh, gathering when I plan to trade uh, in queue for the day. Uh, so I'm looking at gamma notional, the volatility trigger, and the volati volatility trigger is a uh, another proprietary indicator showing where the market makers may shift from positive to uh, negative gamma. So above, if price is trading above this volatility trigger, then uh, that would indicate positive gamma, and uh, again, positive gamma would be a uh, more of a, a lower volatility, mean reverting range range type day, and below the volatility trigger would uh, indicate negative gamma, uh, which would be indicate higher volatility, uh, wider trading range, uh, potentially a, uh, uh, a a trend day. I also look at the uh, the hedge wall and the uh, key gamma strike. These uh, these uh, levels come from the uh, equity hub, and this screenshot is something else that comes from the equity hub. And I, I look at these primarily as an indication of rising and following sen uh, falling sentiment. So if the um, 
key gamma strike in the hedge wall are uh, higher than um, than the previous day, I indicate that uh, this indicates to me kind of a, a bullish sentiment. So uh, in this example here, we see that gamma notional is positive and um, also the hedge wall and the gamma strike have both risen from the prior day. Um, so that's the uh, uh, you know the first first information uh, that I would first set of information that I would gather for the day. Um, the next thing I look at is the Vanna model, and uh, this may take a while to understand. I'll go through it briefly, but uh, again, I would um, urge anyone who's interested to uh, take a look at the uh, Spot Gamma YouTube channel. Uh, there is a uh, uh, video uh, specifically on the Vanna model. So just in a, a nutshell, uh, Vanna uh, uh, indicates the rate at which the delta and vega of an options contract will change as price and volatility of the underlying change. Um, and in my presentation, I'm focusing more on how I use this. So uh, to me, the Vanna model shows how the market maker delta exposure may shift as price and implied volatility move up and down. And uh, the market, the slope of the lines uh, indicates how the market makers will need to hedge. So uh, keep in mind that, that market makers want to remain delta neutral. So as uh, the options order flow shifts from uh, uh, bearish to bullish, you know, whatever they need to buy or sell futures. Uh, in this case, this uh, Vanna model for Qs, the Qs is uh, I interpret as fairly neutral. So, uh, you know, it looks like there may uh, uh, market makers may need to sell futures uh, as price moves uh, up or down, but not not significantly. Uh, so again, this is uh, for the Qs especially. This is uh, which which are typically put dominated. Uh, so this is this is pretty neutral. So based on this information from the uh, uh, from the Spot Gamma uh, morning report from um, from the Equity Hub and and the Vanna model. Uh, my thesis for the day was first, uh, anticipated volatility uh, would be lower. That's based on the positive gamma notional and the neutral Vanna model. Uh, the trading uh, also anticipated the trading range would be narrow uh, based on, again, based on the positive gamma notional and the neutral Vanna model. Uh, also, my directional bias was uh, fairly neutral, mild to mildly bullish, and that would be uh, based on the rising key gamma strike and hedge wall. So uh, overall, I was looking for a range day and uh, looking for long and short entries. So here's the uh, here's my first example for the day, um, and this is a, uh, a long setup. And uh, I, and I'll go through the sequence. Any of you who've uh, seen my charts know that I like to put in a, a numbered sequence. And again, I'm looking for a uh, uh, a confluence of signals uh, when I uh, uh, when I'm looking to enter a trade. So uh, and uh, also uh, what we'll see as we go through these examples is a, uh, uh, a patterns that repeat over and over again. And uh, they pretty much all start with a uh, stop run, uh, stops into a certain level. So in this case, uh, the reversal starts with the stop run into QQQ. In this case, it's uh, midpoint, 367.50. And we see this uh, in the next slide showing QQQ here, uh, price reversing just 
uh, just below 367.50. So, um, you know, that's the first signal that uh, that price may re uh, reverse. Uh, the next thing I'm looking at is uh, number two, the liquidity bid imbalance. And that's, uh, I'm showing that with the black line in the subchart. Uh, you know, that means the uh, uh, more, uh, you know, just a, uh, again, a bid imbalance. Uh, the next is um, three, the market maker hedging flow shifts from neutral to bullish. Uh, that's shown by the spot gamma hero cumulative indicator. And um, Hero is the uh, shows the hedging impact of real-time options. And uh, for anybody who wants to know more about that, I uh, Brent did a uh, presentation uh, on Monday focusing on Hero. Um, then at the same time, the order flow uh, shown by the uh, number four shown uh, by the cumulative volume delta, the CVD, is rising also. So the hero is the green line in the subchart, and uh, CVD is the uh, pink and dark blue line. And uh, then next number five, the uh, aggressive buyer, uh, aggressive buyers with their um, buy market orders start to move price higher. And again, this is a, a pretty typical pattern of uh, you know notice right at the, the first number five there, the uh, order flow, the, vo uh, the volume dots shifting uh, from red to green uh, pretty abruptly. So that's the, uh, that's the first reversal. Um, and then that, that repeats several times for several uh, uh, pullback entries as price makes, it way, uh, makes its way up to the target. Um, at uh, and I in this example, I only noted one target at the uh, spot gamma L1 level, but um, there was uh, you know targets would have been uh, another target would have been the liquidity at uh, 15,100. Um, yeah, there's not a target there on QQQ, so uh, the two primary targets, uh, 15,100 liquidity. And then the uh, actually the, the liquidity at uh, 15,120, as well as the uh, spot gamma level at uh, L1 level. Uh, great setup, uh, Doug. I mean, I mean, how many more confluences do you need here? You know, <laughs> you've, you've well, covered I... everything here. Um, yeah, it's uh, yeah, just uh, you know, what more do you need uh, to con be convinced here, um, basically? I, I, you know, I, I'll talk about this more later, but I I started making these charts for myself, so taking screenshots and marking them up. But you would be surprised if you take a screenshot, and then at the end of the day look at it closely, you would be surprised at all you see. Um, and mark it up and, you know, if it's, if you think it would be helpful to others, post it in chat and Twitter. Um, but, you know, again, I started doing this for myself. And uh, you, by doing this, you start to recognize these patterns and uh, you're, uh, it makes them, you, your ability, it, helps your ability to see them in real time. Yeah, I can't agree more. Um, you know, that uh, uh, I've, I've taken the same path there. Uh, it's been so helpful. Uh, and, you know, and along the way, you're, you're, you're helping people, which is nice. So um, here's the next example. Now, remember, I was looking for a, uh, uh, a lower volatility day, uh, more of a range day uh, uh, or uh, a mean reverting day. So looking for long and short entries. So here's a uh, short entry from the same day. And, uh, you know, again, you'll start to notice uh, repeating patterns. So it starts with a uh, 
stop run into uh, the queues th level th uh, 369, as well as uh, NQ 15,140 liquidity. Uh, we'll take a quick look at the queues, um, and you see that price price moves up just above the uh, 369 level. So that's the um, that's the first first step in the sequence. Again, the buy stops run, and uh, note here I'm showing this with the uh, on chart indicator, and that's the um, the uh, tags with the green dots and uh, I will note that since since I uh, did these charts I have uh, started looking at uh, stops and icebergs in some the sum accumulation mode uh, in the subchart and it's really helpful to see how stops are really driving uh, price in in Q so for here, I'm just showing uh, stops and icebergs with the um, uh, on-chart indicator. So uh, the second item is both absorption and sell icebergs executing. So absorption I'm, uh, is shown with the uh, pink squares, and uh, they typically are appearing on the uh, green dot, showing that sellers are absorbed absorbing the buyers. And um, then the icebergs are shown with the uh, icons with the E, indicating that the icebergs were executed. So those are larger players um, executing their, their hidden iceberg uh, sell orders. Then uh, note in the subchart there, uh, items three and four, that both the uh, hedging flow, market maker hedging flow shown by the hero indicator and the order flow shown by the CVD. Um, so that's the green line and the blue line are, are shifting down, shifting bearish. Um, then there's the trend break uh, shown number five there and aggressive sellers with their uh, sell market orders moving price lower. Uh, and that's the uh, showing the first entry after the uh, reversal, as well as uh, uh, a couple of pullback entries. And there were, you know, if you zoom in, there were certainly more pullback entries. Um, the number of targets here, the spot gamma levels, um, and uh, NQ, the round number 15,100, and then uh, QQQ 368. Um, we see on the, the second chart of uh, QQQ here. So, uh, you know, you can see how important these round number levels are in the queues. Price going from uh, 369 down to 368. So, so Doug, are you looking at, I mean, um, uh, for your targets, um, are you looking at you're looking at multiple uh, confluences as well? I mean, uh, yeah, you, that's, you just that's mentioned right. a bunch of them. Yeah, um, but uh, I just see that the number six is there above where the queues actually were. Um, at, they were at, at three six eight. They're they're down at that kind of fifteen oh nine two fifty. Um, at kind of on the right edge of your chart there. Right. One, so around eleven fifteen or so. Right. So. Um, you know, I guess that uh, both those round numbers could act at tar as targets. So as it turns out, I think uh, 368, uh, at least for this trade, was the uh, was the final target. And that's that was a little bit below 15,100. Right. Yeah, I, I think that's often the case that the the three uh, the cues, the round numbers and the cues are more important. Um, than the round numbers in in NQ, I you know I would look at those uh, first. So uh, you know it, it looks like uh, price. You know, and of course NQ being a big index is going to uh, often overshoot uh, a little bit. But uh, you know here it looks like uh, 
at least again for this trade that 368 was the the final target yeah yeah no really really nice and uh just to note that uh, the uh ratio between nq and the q's is about 41 and it it varies a little bit from day to day uh and i i normally calculate it every day especially after the the contract rollover until it kind of finally settles on a on a uh a number that i and i just keep those levels on the chart but uh i'm i'm at the point where i'm still adjusting it a little bit and uh Yesterday, for example, that number was about 41.03. And when you're talking about a, uh, a 15,000 point index, that 0.03 does make a little bit of dif difference if you're trying to be precise. Interesting. Yeah. So how do you derive that number? Is it just uh, uh, 368 divided by 15? Um, yeah, so what I do is... Uh, uh as as the day starts i look at a, a one minute candlestick chart for nq and the q's and i will take a couple of high and low points on that chart you know two or three points high and low points and uh calculate the ratio and then i'll take the average um so it takes a little bit of hand work, you know, it takes a minute or two, but, uh, you know, once I have that number established, then I will, and I keep these, these numbers in a, um, a notes column, uh, on my chart. And, um, so the, uh, these numbers and I have colors that I use for, uh, for different items. So I, I keep, uh, uh, the cues in blue, you know, for whatever reason. So, uh, and I may, you know, based on the number for the day, I may move these up or down a little bit. And then I also like to uh, just have a note at the uh, the NQ round number levels, just as a you know, a quick visual reference. And then I and then before the market opens, uh, I draw these lines in every day just to have another visual reference. So that's that's how I set up my chart. And then um, for those who may not be familiar with Spot Gamma, uh, part of the subscription is the uh, uh, Cloud Notes links. And uh, so the levels in this this column, the Spot SG Cloud Notes, uh, are updated uh, daily, uh, automatically. And the numbers shown there are for NDX. And there's usually uh, uh, you know, in this case, it looks like about a 10 point difference between NQ and NDX. Okay. Um, so, uh, we have a, a slew of questions in here, uh, for you. Oh. Um, and I thought maybe we'd get to them before you get to your next example. Okay. All right. So, uh, Joe's asking, asking actually on the first, uh, example, I believe, um, uh, oh, what actually happens at the options position at the target level, uh, which was an L level? Um, oh, level one there, yeah. So, Joe, I don't know exactly what you mean by uh, how do you decide to. Oh, okay, that's another question. Never mind. What exactly well, do you mean? Um, well, that's a. Uh, that level is a. Uh, what Spy Gamma calls a combo level. So, uh, you know, and I again refer you to Spot Gamma for more information, but they're taking um, gamma levels in NDX as well as QQQ and coming up with a combo level. That sh and this is just an area of, uh, of gamma concentration, and it uh, can act as support, resistance, and a target. Um, but it, it's just a level of gamma concentration in the uh, in the underlying uh, ETF and index. Okay, uh, and then Joe is also asking, how do you decide what product to trade for the day? Um, that's that's a good question. I. Um, uh, I prefer uh, there advan I trade ES or in in Q, 
and um, primarily, and I, uh, there are advantages and disadvantages to each. And uh, I found that by keeping stats uh, over time, uh, I have a better record within Q, uh, even though it, it moves around more. And uh, uh, I, I, I just like the follow through and in Q. Uh, so recently, I've really been mostly trading uh, in Q. Uh, the advantage of ES is that it's a little bit slower moving and uh, uh, it, it, there's also a lot of information uh, in the order flow and from spot gamma about ES, but the uh, uh, sometimes the rotations in ES can be pretty painful. Uh, so again, I, I prefer to trade in Q. And if it, uh, uh, you know, if I just like what I see in the pre-market or uh, based on what I see in the, uh, the morning report, spot gamma morning report. Uh, let's say that the um, the Vanna model for uh, SPX is neutral looking, looking for a narrow range mean reverting, and the uh, uh, Vanna model uh, for QQQ is showing a significant skew, indicating more of a trend day and a higher volatility, wider wider trading range. Uh, I would uh, want to trade in Q for that day. Okay, so um, that's, that's how I decide. Okay, uh, that's a very good answer there. Um, the um, uh, uh, Sviatoslav is actually asking about. Uh, um, you know, where do you take your entries and exits? Now, I know you've marked that up. I think what he's getting to, though, is um, perhaps like where are you um, executing uh, your trades? Because you can execute in Bookmap, but it looks like you're uh, executing uh, uh, from, uh, you know, something else using Bookmap for data visualization. Right. I actually, uh, and I'll talk about this at the end, my uh, futures broker is Tradeovate. Uh, so I actually look at the um, uh, trade. I actually trade from the trade of eight dome um, and look at while looking at the bookmap chart. Now there is a, um, I, I think a beta version of a uh, uh, trade of eight connection in um, in bookmap, but it's as far as I know, it's not fully functional, um, and I. One of the reasons I, I I I like I'm just used to trading the uh, with the uh, trade of eight dome. Uh, it has very sophisticated brackets, which I take advantage of, uh, allowing me to set profit targets at different levels, and uh, it has an auto break even feature. And uh, so I use trade of eight, um, but I uh, for actual placing the trades. But I use Bookmap for my trading decisions. Okay. Um, then uh, let's see, there's a few other questions I guess we'll get to um, a bit later. I just want to mention here regarding some of the spot gamma um, uh, information and options information here. Uh, many of the things that uh, Doug is, is talking about can be found from the spot gamma website, from the article as well that's uh, in the chat there, uh, you'll see it. And then I also just pasted in here, um, the Pro Trader webinar um, playlist uh, from our Bookmap YouTube channel. You can go back and watch some of those Spot Gamma uh, presentations, and he, you know, Brent was just presenting on on Monday, so go back and, and watch that one. So there's a, a, a host of different um, uh, areas where you can find this information. Okay, and I, I will add that I have watched all of those videos probably more than once. And uh, <laughs> so, you know, my intent here is to show the more practical side. So I'm showing how I actually use this information to to uh, to form a thesis for the day as well as to uh, place, place trades. Right, right. Okay, uh, I think some of the other questions we can get to after your next example. 
Okay, so uh, while we're actually on this first example, I do want to uh, point out one thing. Notice here, uh, this item number six, the market make or hedging flow uh, shifting from uh, bullish to bearish with these two two big drops, this uh, 5K triangle, which is uh, uh, part of Hero, uh, showing a... Um, showing uh, bearish market maker hedging activity based on options trades. And then this 3K triangle here. And, um, and note, note the time here, 9.54 is um, when this chart ends. And then we'll go to the second chart, pick up uh, um, oh, about 10.30 here and see that uh, then, you know, after that, shift in the uh, hedging flow um, I'm, I'm looking for a, uh, a bearish trade which I show in this example interesting because uh, right at that level which you have in the, the white dotted line is the combo level as well <laughs> right um, so uh, all, all of those con confluence um, uh, all, all of that confluence together there right so yeah this This starts, uh, yeah, just a little bit of uh, the bearish trade starts a little bit above this level. So, you know, in this case, it looks like uh, Hero is kind of uh, uh, the down move in Hero is kind of preceding the uh, uh, the down move in uh, NQ. So, you know, again, just to summarize this this first first trade example. Uh, my thesis for the day was looking for a uh, lower volatility, um, uh, more narrow trading range, um, mean reverting with a slightly bullish uh, outlook. And then this is uh, how the day played out. Um, so the entire, uh, for this entire day, that was about a, uh, the point range was about 70 points in NQ. Uh, up and down with a, um, especially in the morning, with a uh, you know slightly bullish or uh, you know bullish end of the day. So the uh, the day played out pretty much as the uh, um, uh, the thesis uh, kind of predicted. And one other thing to note here is the the green line on the subchart. Um, as well as the, the blue line, the uh, CVD were both kind of bearish for the day, and that um, that was kind of a, a forecast or a tell for the next couple of days. So this was August 9th, and then uh, I didn't include August 10th here. I think you can, uh, if you want, look back in your charts and see that was actually a bearish day, um, uh, as this day was as well. Uh, so two days later, August 11th, um, again, starting with the, um, um, starting with the, the metrics for the cues um, from the AM report and uh, note here the shift in the metric. So now gamma notional is negative, uh, volati uh, the volatility trigger has dropped to 366 and the hedge wall and key gamma strike uh, strikes have both dropped down to 368 from 370 the prior day <clears throat> now this is great doug i mean the way that you've got like th these um um your high it's, it's uh unique uh instead of looking at volume profile or or you know um some higher time frame candlesticks you're actually looking at the the options um uh, information and data to give you your higher time frame outlook for the day well i as a, i i guess as a, a an options trader and i i still trade options um this is what makes sense to me uh, the relationship between um uh, the uh options trading and uh, the futures. So, um, you know, again, I, I took information from uh, all of those sources and developed 
uh, a system that made sense to me. And this is this is what this is what uh, resonates with me. Um, so not to discount any other way of looking at the market, there are uh, a number of uh, very experienced, successful traders uh, in the Discord chat room that use volume profile very successfully. Uh, again, this is just another way of looking at the market that, that makes sense to me and helps me develop a, uh, uh, again, a thesis for the day and uh, uh, develop uh, targets and helps me to execute trades so yeah it, it, it's unique i mean like uh, we we don't see i mean we haven't really ha even had this kind of information available to us uh until spot gamma came along right that you know like i said brent has introduced uh i think to retail traders a whole new way of looking at uh price behavior um in the uh, futures based on market maker hedging flow. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Yeah, I, I, th I think it's fascinating. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I mean, um, so if anyone's interested in that, there's just tons of resources out there. Uh, like I said, uh, just click on Doug's article and start there. So uh, again, note the, uh, the change in the, the metrics in the previous slide, and also the change in the, the Vanna model. Now, Brent actually calls this a right side skew, um, where the the lines have shifted so that the uh, uh, lines are now moving up uh, to the on the left side, showing that uh, as price moves down, uh, the market makers hedging uh, delta exposure is going to increase more rapidly than we saw in the first Vanna model. So that means they will need to uh, sell in queue more aggressively as price moves down. Uh, now this doesn't necessarily predict direction. It just is showing that um, uh, market makers would need to really uh, trade more with the price rather than against it. And it could work conversely here that uh, uh, market makers need, may need to buy futures as uh, QQQ price moves up. Um, so uh, then my thesis for this day, First, anticipated volatility. I'm looking for a higher volatility and that's based on the negative gamma notional and the skewed Vanna model. Also our wider trading range, again, based on the negative gamma notional and the skewed Vanna model. And based on the falling uh, levels, the key gamma strike, the volatility trigger and the hedge wall, uh, my directional bias was mildly bearish. So overall, I was looking for a trend day and primarily uh, short entries. Uh, here's the first example. And uh, uh, one thing to note, I, I like to use the hero indicator to confirm my thesis. So my thesis was that, uh, that market makers would be, um, would be selling as price moved down, and that's what what Hero is showing there. So that's a good good confirmation of the thesis. So uh, again, going through this step by step, um, the first is uh, buy stops. Uh, in this case, into uh, the VWAP, which is the uh, which is the light blue line here. And then the uh, point of control, which is the the purple line, and it's just just below uh, 368 in the queues and uh, 15,100 in NQ. Um, and the second item is the uh, sellers absor absorbing the buyers. So uh, you see the the pink squares on the the green dots. Then the trend break, um, and uh, you know, again down on the subchart, the um, 
hedging flow, market maker hedging flow, and the uh, uh, CVD shifting bearish. Number six is showing the aggressive sellers starting to move price lower with their uh, uh, sell market orders. So that again, the shift from uh, green dots to red dots, and that that's the first reversal entry. And then there are several uh, other uh, pullback entries as well. And uh, you know, I'm kind of zoomed out here as you, uh, you know, if you zoom in closer, I'm sure there were uh, a lot more uh, entry levels. And then finally, uh, a multitude of targets here um, at uh, QQQ levels, spot gamma levels, and uh, 15,000 in NQ. And here is the, what it looked like in um, in the queues. And you can see that the liquidity at uh, 365 was the primary target. And uh, once I see this in QQQ, um, it's a if price is heading down, it's a pretty good bet. <laughs> That's where it's going at the, this high liquidity level at a round number in the queues. Um, it's you know, almost like if they uh, they put the liquidity in, then then price will seek that. So oh, a question um, uh, the, on a few from a few different people, um, mostly uh, Daniel though here on the uh, hero uh, and the relationship with the cumulative volume delta uh, and how you look at that or when they're trend they seem to trend together for these really nice um, setups. What do you do when they do not trend together? Well, that's a good question. So first of all. Uh, when they're moving in the same direction, that gives me, uh, uh, I guess, kind of a warm and fuzzy feeling about uh, trading in that direction. That's a, a, a very good confirmation. Um, recently, uh, Hero has been a little bit more difficult to interpret. And uh, uh, Brent, uh, again, Brent on Monday uh, talked about that in his presentation. He covered Hero quite a bit. Um, in that case, I'm a little bit more, if if they're not going in the same direction, um, I'm a little bit more tentative uh, about uh, which way to trade. I, I, I guess I may wait for more confirmation or look at other things. And uh, something else that I mentioned is I have uh, uh, changed the settings for my subchart. Here, I'm not showing stops and icebergs uh, in the subchart, but I have changed. So I am showing that now in uh, the sum accumulation mode and uh, starting to see very good um, correlation between stops and um, and price action in NQ especially. So um, again, what, what do you mean by that, Doug? Well, I I, uh, I, can't, I don't have it up now, but take a look at some of my uh, most recent examples from this week in uh, uh, NQ on Twitter and in Bookmap Discord chat room. So, um, you know, for example, uh, here uh, you can look at um, sell stops. So buy stops would be the indication when they're buy a buy stop run into a level would be uh, and then you you know I, I wouldn't make a trade just based on that but you you know you certainly see all of the uh, pieces in place for a reversal here uh, you know all the confluences that I've talked about and um, then you can see that uh, now there are very large stop orders um, helping to drive price down and those are shown by the uh, the red dots below so um, yeah 636 66 uh, 
you know, these red dots showing uh, sell stops, helping to fuel the price lower, helping to fuel the move lower. And that's a, a little bit easier to see with the uh, the stops and the subchart. Understood. Understood. Does that Excellent. make sense? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I'm just, that's something that I've just noticed by observation. Uh, but it, it seems to be pretty consistent. It's, it's something worth looking at. Okay. Uh, I think we're all caught up on the presentation or the uh, questions here. Um, uh, yes, yeah, Sviatoslav had just one more here about um, uh, if you have a thesis for the day, it isn't working, um, um, then then what what do you do? I, I you know I would say I, I trade what I see. So the you know the thesis for the day is not uh, not an end all be all. It's a uh, it, I, especially for a directional bias, I, uh, you know, I would easily throw that out the door. I think the, uh, uh, you know, as far as the um, the first two items that I look for in my thesis, the anticipated volatility and the trading range, generally hold true to uh, uh, to what I think. And um, but again, I, you know, at the end of the day, I'm going to trade trade to what I see. So I'm I'm looking at uh, you know that point, looking at price action, highs and lows. Which way is price going, and uh, where is it going? And that's the you know those are the kind of the final um, you know final things and in, in placing a trade. And most important, again, the trend and the target. Uh, uh, understood. Understood. So, I mean, if I can kind of like um, in a in a nutshell, just maybe this is. Would you agree uh, that your trading strategy is this overall, you know, higher time frame outlook for the day based on these options metrics, various options metrics, um, and then um, waiting for some of that to start to unfold in the order flow in Bookmap, and then looking at confluences. To support that order flow. Yeah, that's that's a very good summary. Yes. Yeah, I mean, because you've gone through a lot of things and there's a lot of stuff going on here, uh, but uh, uh, kind of overall, you know, um, uh, look at it like uh, uh, just to try to simplify and boil that down because uh, it's it's brilliant. I mean, uh, you you really have a nice nice setup here. Thanks. Yeah, I've I, again I've taken what I've learned from from Bookmap, Spot Gamma, uh, JTrader, Scott, and the chat room, and tried to put it all together uh, in a system that makes sense to me. And and this is this is what I've come up with. All right. Um, let's see. Do you have another example, or uh, should well, this um... is. Let me. I'll just finish up with this example. This is the last one. So okay. Uh, this is how the day played out this August 11th. And uh, remember that my thesis for the day was looking for a wider trading range, uh, higher volatility, and uh, potentially a trend day uh, with a, uh, a bearish outlook. And that's pretty much what played out. Uh, you know, see, uh, in the morning session was. Uh, a trend day all the way down to that uh, li liquidity target at uh, 365 in the queues, and that's where that's where price reversed and moved a little bit higher uh, in the afternoon. Um, and uh, you know that's also confirmed by both the uh, hero indicator, again the green line in the uh, subchart, as well as the uh, CBD, the blue and pink line in the in the subchart. So the, you know, this is another day where the uh, where the uh, price action pretty much played out as uh, as expected from the thesis, and uh, again confirmed by uh, Hero and CVD.
Yeah, yeah. So do you do you find that um, uh, do you find yourself taking trades like maybe the the overall thesis is working out, the order flow is is um, working out, but you don't have multiple confluences. Will you still take the trade, or like you just maybe smaller position sizing, or anything like that? You know, I I don't trade all day long, and I found what works best for me is to um, uh, take what J Trader calls A plus setups. So the more confluences, the better. And I I keep track of all my trades, and I. Um, uh, track all of the uh, confluences or confirmations for a trade. So I have, uh, uh, and I use software that I can track all this. I, I don't know, for me, the more confluences or confirmations, the better. Um, and I, you know, my goal uh, is to take, you know, just a handful of very high quality trades per day. So, uh, you know, I, you know, it's hard to make a judgment call, but I would say, that, you know, the more confluences, the more, uh, signals that I have, the better. And, yeah. uh, yeah, make, so, make, make sense. Yeah. I just have better results if I, uh, if I take a few A plus setups every day. All right. Yeah. I think we're, caught up on the questions oh, okay all right so just to wrap it up first I want to go over the tools that I use and um, uh, first is uh, of course um, bookmap and I have a global plus subscription uh, there are a couple of adva advantages to that and I, I would say number one is access to the daily webinars you know again that's with Bruce reading order flow uh, as well as uh, J Trader and Scott uh, trading uh, on uh, Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, there's also the ability to trade from the platform. So when I trade stocks, I actually uh, do trade from from Bookmap with my TradeStation account. Um, and then there's the absorption indicator, also included with Global Plus, which I I do use and utilize. Uh, I also use the MBO bundle uh, that includes the stop and iceberg trackers, both the uh, on chart and sub chart, as well as the uh, Li liquidity tracker pro. And then there's spot gamma. Uh, you have a pro subscription. So that includes um, the, the levels that are included in the reports, as well as the uh, cloud notes. Um, and the morning and afternoon reports and all the information on the website as well as equity hub and i've just barely touched that but that's a uh i guess a whole other thing on spot gamma if you trade stocks it's very helpful and then uh, also the hero indicator um, again showing the hedging impact of real-time options which helps me to uh confirm my thesis for the day and um you know, see how the market makers are, are hedging, uh, see how the market maker hedging activity is going. Uh, and as I mentioned, I use Trade of Eight uh, for my futures trading platform. Uh, I also use Thinkorswim primarily for real time options data. So I can, um, you know, kind of confirm what I'm seeing with, uh, uh, with, Hero, for example, so I can look at uh, Thinkorswim and see uh, how traders are trading calls and puts and whether they're buying or selling calls and puts. And that kind of helps to uh, inform my decisions sometimes. Uh, then finally, I use rhythmic data for futures, and that includes the uh, MBO market by order data, which um, uh, are, uh, which Bookmap uses for the uh, stops and iceberg tracker, uh, stop and iceberg trackers. And then finally, DX feed data for stocks. And uh, even if you don't trade stocks, uh, you know, I think I've shown how important it is. It's certainly important to me to watch 
the queues for trading NQ and watching SPY for uh, for trading ES. And then finally, uh, some of my takeaways. Um, first of all, take advantage of the educational resources that uh, that Bookmap offers. It's just uh, incredible. I haven't seen anything like like this with any other software. Uh, you know, again, there's the educational videos, the daily webinars, the YouTube channel, uh, the extensive knowledge base, uh, the Discord chat room. Um, all are great, and I've taken advantage of that, learned from that, and uh, developed a, a system that makes sense to me, which is my second takeaway. Um, so, you know, I, I want to know why and, uh, you know, what what I think is driving the market. And, and uh, uh, again, I think a good bit of it is the market maker hedging flow and uh, options trading that's driving the market. So this is what, what makes sense to me. Um, also, uh, put in the time to study, watch, watch book map every day, uh, watch order flow, study, uh, take a markup screenshots. Uh, it's been an invaluable exercise for me um, to study these charts, learn the patterns, and then you can recognize them then in real time uh, after looking at all these charts, plus it, uh, you know, I have a great uh, catalog of, of setups, and uh, you know, I post these in uh, in the chat room and in Twitter, and uh, you know, it helped other people as well. And then finally, um, again, when you're trading in queue, uh, watch the queues. Um, you know, I, I use uh, uh, information about QQQ for planning. Uh, as well as uh, uh, executing trades. So, uh, and then uh, SPY is still important with, uh, when trading ES, maybe not quite as important as QQQ is to NQ uh, uh, as far as trading, but as, as far as preparation, it's very important. Uh, the gamma notional um, and SPY is often, often higher. Uh, there's more uh, more activity in, um, in SPY than SPX. So that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, Bruce, any, any final questions, any final thoughts? Uh, let's see. Um, not really. We, uh, went through all the questions. I mean, uh, one, a few things that I have not, um, mentioned yet. Uh, there's a lot of appreciation coming in here, Doug, uh, for your presentation and your setups, as well as your work uh, in uh, Twitter and the uh, the Bookmap Discord chat room. A lot of a lot of uh, 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 you know appreciation there, uh, and um, uh, also requests already, like a few different requests to have you come back uh, and look at the live market. Uh, maybe one of these days. It <laughs> it uh, it. it it took a long time. This it took a lot of preparation for this uh, presentation. Um, so I, you know, maybe uh, uh, maybe in six months or so, I'll uh, I'll I'll be ready again. Yeah, yeah, sounds great. I mean, uh, uh, just uh, you know, um, uh, taking a look at the uh, the live market and uh, you know, going through your your um, whole process here. Uh, but uh, applying it to um, now that you got we've got this webinar here, uh, you, you know, applying it to the live market and see what see what you you, you see and 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 think of uh, um, regards to your overall thesis and which way the order flow is going. And now, now again, if anybody wants to um, see more of my my post and setups, uh, they're all posted on Twitter. Uh, also, again, the articles I, I've written, uh, I don't know, somewhere between five and 10 articles for, for Spot Gamma. I believe they're available to the public. Uh, Bruce has the link. Uh, you know, they're all available in the Spot Gamma blog. Uh, and they, uh, you know, it's like an expanded Twitter post where I, I go into more detail about um, 
by preparation uh, as well as uh, execution for a trade. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Um, so uh, yeah, thank thank you so much, uh, Doug. This was uh, uh, really great to see, and and also um, uh, we've heard uh, from Brent quite a bit, uh, but really applying it into Bookmap and the order flow here uh, is uh, uh, really nice to hear to see. You're taking it uh, from that perspective, uh, which is uh, you know uh, gaining some traction here with a a, a tradable uh, uh, solution here. Yeah, again, I wanted to show more of the practical side of Spot Gamma, how you can put that all together to uh, develop a thesis and to help you uh, with your trading. Yeah, yeah, it's a great resource. So, uh, uh, yeah, you've you've created here. Um, so, uh, yeah, thank you very much, Doug, and, and we'll have you back. Great. Glad everyone enjoyed it. Okay. All right. Uh, have a, a great, uh, this is the end of the ProTrader webinar for uh, Q3. Uh, we'll do it again in Q4 and uh, get another lineup for you guys uh, and uh, and take it from there. So um, uh, thanks again, Doug, and uh, we will uh, uh, do it again. Okay, great. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Right. Bye. -bye. Bye.